welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am a full-time kindergarten teacher who flips furniture on the side to pay off my student loan debt with the profits that I make. So today I was looking on Facebook Marketplace and I just happened to come across this post that had posted three minutes ago for three free pieces of furniture. It is a set, a dresser set. So there's a long dresser with a mirror, a tall dresser, and then a little nightstand. So we're gonna, of course, head over to pick that up since I was the first one to respond to her message. I've got 11 people behind me, so I've gotta go over and get that right away. We are here to pick up the free dressers, so let's get them all loaded up. Just check in just to make sure all the drawers work so I can tell it's particle board but I don't really shy away from particle board as long as it's well made the drawers work like really that's all that matters in my opinion looks good to me I'll load it up We got it all loaded up. All right, so I'm here in the garage today. I need to reattach these rails because when I lifted this tall dresser to put in the truck, they all fell off every single drawer. So we kind of had a hard time fitting everything in the truck, but I am going to reattach these and make them a little bit more secure. Okay, so it stays now but it they all tend to just fall right off so i am going to try and use these screws over here self-tapping screws which are just screws that i don't have to do a pilot hole for i'm hoping they just slide right in and i will be able to do that on all one two three four five drawers Well, the screws I was using have a little like curved head on them and so they're catching on the wheels when I push in the drawer. All right, new plan, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna put the screws, the same screws I was using on the bottom. So just one screw here even will at least reinforce it a little bit and then I'll take these ones out. All right, these drawers are all in there now. I did have a little mishap and I kind of split one of the ones, so I'll have to glue that a little later. Clamp it, it'll be good as new. And down below, there is a spot that I have to put a new board on because as you can see right down here, there's a space. And actually when we picked it up, there was a gap there. So this part along the whole bottom is just missing. So I'll be replacing that with this pine board right here that I have to cut. That'll be my next step before I clean or anything. All right, so as I said, I am going to put this pine board on the bottom here to make it so that there is no gap. If you look over here at the one that matches it, it has the original. Well, when I got this free set, I didn't notice that it had no piece here at the bottom, but I want to make them pretty cohesive. It's not going to have the same angled parts that the other two do, but it's still going to bring it all together. And when I paint it all, you're not really going to be able to notice. So I'm just going to take this pine board and I'm going to measure it, which is 29 and a quarter inch and measure 29 and a quarter inch. 
then I'm gonna take my jigsaw and we're gonna cut it and we're gonna fit it to size. Yes, I can hold my own with a little bit of power tools. So thanks to my dad, he's been teaching me kind of over the past year, but honestly over the course of my entire life so that I can do things on my own. So I am gonna be using a jigsaw today to just cut this board, pretty simple cut. Don't be afraid to use some power tools here and there. Okay, just like that. We've got our piece and we're gonna go make sure that it fits on there. All right, let's test it out. Obviously I'm gonna sand it down and all that good stuff, but magic fits right in perfectly even the drawer goes in and out just fine now we gotta attach it so i got these clamps back for my birthday from my brother and sister-in-law now it's gotta figure out how to use them I want to clamp this together because I want to make sure that it's nice and tight when I hook the wood on the bottom and that way it'll also be held together with the wood too. Keep in mind that I am still a beginner. I still qualify myself as a beginning furniture flipper because I don't do too many fixes on furniture. I would like to get into some more fixes and I've actually picked up some pieces recently where I am going to have to get into more fixing and just little things like this where you have to do a little bit more work before you get into the painting, the best part, but it's worth it in the end to find a piece and be able to refurbish it so that it can save it from the landfill and just to see the new life that I'm able to give it. So I'm going to do a pilot hole now which is just a hole before I put the screw. Before I put pilot holes on the other side I'm going to do one screw Okay, and I will need to get my stronger drill here in a minute so that this can go down into the wood. So what I'm doing actually is I'm countersinking the screws. Countersinking is a term that just means screwing the screw in beneath the level of the wood so that then later I can put some wood filler in there and sand it down and it won't even look like there's screws in there. Kind of split in the wood, which is fine, and I'll just put some wood filler in that as well. And this piece is solid. We're gonna set it back up and I'm gonna clean. So today I am going to be using crud cutter to clean my pieces. And remember, this is the most important part. Before you paint, you need to clean. You're getting all the dust and dirt off so that the paint then can adhere to the furniture piece instead of that dust and dirt. Okay, so now I'm finished up cleaning and now I'm going to dry it down with my towel. prefer to get rid of mirrors when they come with them I tend to keep them because it kind of ups the value and again if someone doesn't want it they can always just say no on the mirror or they can get rid of it later okay that is all dry and my next step is to just take a sandpaper and just do some hand sanding on the tops to get some of the water damage off and make it all smooth before I paint. Be 
Before I remove the hardware, I am going to go down to the bottom of this dresser and put some wood filler in it so it can dry. I'm using the plastic wood X again for the filling of the holes where I put the screws in. And this is the one that changes color when it's dry. So it goes on pink, but it'll come to a natural color when it is ready for sanding. So this is where I reattached the bottom panel here, or I attached a new one. And I had some screws that I put in to attach it with and I want to make sure that those holes are covered up so I'm putting the wood filler so that it doesn't look like there's any screws there. And once that's dry, I'll be able to sand it down and it'll be nice and smooth. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and remove the hardware on all three pieces. And since it is in such nice condition and it's gonna be matching for the new look that I'm giving these pieces, I'm actually gonna keep the hardware without even doing anything to it. So I'm going to keep it all in one spot so I don't lose it and I can reattach it when everything is ready. hardware is all off. Now I'm going to be taking the drawers out of all of the pieces. I am going to number them with my Sharpie so that I don't mix them up when I am putting them in again. So I'm just going to do it right here on the back and I'm going to put tall, so T for tall and drawer number one. The Sharpie, I put it on the back so that you can't see it, but also if they ever take the drawers out, they'll also know, so it's okay that it's on there because it will never be seen. And then I'm gonna get to painting. Many drawers I gotta paint those but first I do need to fix this here drawer that I kind of messed up when I was working on it earlier all I need to do though is reinforce it with some wood glue here in the middle and then clamp it with my clamp and that'll be able to dry now what I'm gonna do first is put some glue here between where the drawer attaches to the bottom of the drawer. I am just using my Gorilla wood glue. And then I'm gonna put that together. I always say more the better. You can always kind of wipe it off and it'll dry. Then I'm gonna go on to the other side. Just gonna add some glue down in here as well. And push it together. Clamping it as well to hold it together. All right, and now hopefully, hopefully, I fixed the mistake that I made from the beginning when I broke this drawer, but we're gonna hope that that is going to hold. And although this drawer is gonna be drying for a while and I might even have to paint it last, I'm gonna get to painting. All right, it looks like the wood filler down here is all dry, so I'm just gonna take my 80 grit sandpaper and smooth that out. All right, and now that that's all smoothed out and ready to go, I'm ready to get some paint. All right, so for these dressers and the nightstand, I am gonna go and use my Rust-Oleum Chalked Linen White. I've used this in a couple of flips before, and I know some of you guys are like, ah, stop with the white, but 
you got to keep in mind that I am trying to put this money toward my student loan debt and I have noticed that in my area this look sells and it sells fast and it sells well. Also, a lot of you guys enjoyed the mismatched dresser with the two nightstands that I did this same look on. So I'm going to go a little bit more in depth with how I got that stained glaze on the top of the dressers. I am going to begin by using the linen white. So I'm going to pour this into a, another container. For the Rust-Oleum, usually I don't put any water in it to thin it out, but it is a pretty thick chalk paint. And since I've been putting some water in the Dixie Bell paint, I'm gonna try and put just a little bit in the Rust-Oleum as well to kind of thin it out, maybe lessen those brush strokes a little bit more. Again, not too much. I just want a little bit to thin it out a tad bit but because this is water-based paint it's okay to add some water for this set i am also going to be using my zebra paintbrush i have had this over there waiting for me i just opened it up it is so soft it is the two inch angled brush and i'm excited to put it to use with the um, white and then for the gray I'm going to be using a different zebra brush. Let's get to painting. Generally with the Rust-Oleum chalk paint you can tell pretty much right away if you're going to need a second coat and as you can tell I will be needing that second coat because the brown is still popping through. Alright, I have been given a lot of tips in the comments to use playing cards from the Dollar Tree to stick between the mirror and the part that I'm going to paint. So I'm going to give it a try right now and we'll see how it goes. Alright, so far so good on the cards. I'm liking how it's keeping them off and it seems like they're just going to be easy to pull right out. So I'm going to let this dry. I'm not going to paint the top and the bottom of the mirror because I'm going to do those gray to match the tops of the dressers and nightstand. I'm going to do a second coat on everything and then I'll move on to the tops and paint those gray. Now that I've got the second coat done on all of the white, I'm going to move to the gray on tops while that is drying. So I'm using the Rust-Oleum Chalked Aged Gray. So after I paint it with the aged gray, I will show you my tricks with the smoked glaze over the top. I'm using another zebra brush. It is the two inch smaller angled brush. So it's just a super easy grip in your hands that has a great thumb rest here, short handle. I love the zebra brushes. All of them that I've tried just have been amazing. So I highly recommend and they're super affordable too. So that's another plus, especially if you're just starting out. One reason that I'm painting the tops gray different than the white bottoms is just to give it a little bit more character, a little bit of pop, I guess. I know it's still a neutral color, but it makes it different. It makes it stand out and that way it's just not all plain old white. Alright, the first coat of gray is done on all three of the tops and now I am going to move to the mirror where I'm going to put the gray as well. Alright, so the gray is done on the mirror, that's going to dry. 
And now I can do the third coat on all the white and then I'll be done with the white and I'll come back to the gray once that's dry. Coat number three coming at you. Since this is the third coat, I'm going to make sure to go all the same way with my brush strokes, make it look as nice as possible. That way when this dries, there'll be barely any brush strokes. And the ones that are there will just be very subtle but still nice. I'm done with all three coats of the white all I've got left to paint is the last coat hopefully last coat of the gray on top and then I'm gonna let that dry and then we will finally 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 be able to get to the smoked glaze even though these are not real wood I'm still getting a little bit of bleed through must have been some sort of stain that I didn't quite get off enough or something's just popping through so I'm gonna grab some Dixie Belle boss which is just a primer and it blocks any stains odors stops the bleed through so I'm going to apply some of that just kind of right in this area it's a clear primer I can already tell that it's still kind of popping through so I'm gonna need to let this dry and then I'm gonna have to probably do another coat of it so Okay, so this is dried overnight, and I'm hoping that my little glue fix fixed the problem. I will link these clamps down below. They're pretty handy. They go three feet, so that's kind of nice, and it can go as little as you need it or as long as you need it. So, But the drawer seems to be solid now. Yay! Can't even tell. Perfect. Whew. Now I've just got to get this one painted three coats just like I did all of the rest of them. Alrighty, and the second coat of gray is finished. It just needs to dry, and then I finally get to do the smoked glaze on top. So all of the white paint is dry. This last drawer, I just did three coats on over a little bit of time. So I'm gonna go through with my hand sander and distress everything before I put on the top coat. I always like to do this because that way the distressing is still sealed with that top coat. When I distress, I just do in the places where it might actually wear, um, if it is bumped or nicked. I don't really do much in the middle parts. I just kind of stay around the edges and make it look a little bit natural more than forced. Okay, now that I'm done distressing everything, I'm gonna go around with my chip brush and get all that dust off. All 
All right, all the distressing is done. So my next step is to take the smoked glaze and apply it to the tops of each dresser. And I'm gonna take you step by step in how I do that. All right, so I had tons of people telling me that my last month's set of the dresser with the two nightstands was their favorite. One, because I did a mismatch set, but also because I had the smoked glaze top. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to get that look on your furniture pieces as well. So you gotta start out with the aged gray chalk paint from Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint, which you knew I already applied. I did two coats of it. Sometimes you might need just one, sometimes you might need even three. It just depends on the darkness, the type of furniture that you have and that you're trying to get this look on. Now that both coats of the aged gray is dry, I am going to take the smoked glaze from Rust-Oleum chalk paint and I'm going to apply it with this small brush. You could also use a little bit of a bigger brush. I just like the smaller one because I have a little bit more control. So I'm gonna open up the can here. I've gotten so many uses out of just one can, so keep that in mind. This lasts you a long time. I'm not even halfway done and I've had this for as long as I have been flipping furniture. I have a lint-free cloth here. I got these from Menards. You can also get them off of Amazon in a big bulk pack. So then I am just going to take my little brush and I am going to brush it on all over the top of the nightstand. I am going to get all the way to the edges. This reminds me of a stain look. Um, where you apply a good amount and then later you're gonna wipe off the excess. So you wanna do it quick enough so that it doesn't dry, but you also still wanna have control so that it doesn't get on the sides of your piece and fling anywhere. Had that problem before. I really try to go just one way with the glaze because I'm just trying to get it to look more of like a wooden top. And then I also need to get down here on the edges, also on the front edge. Okay, now that I've got the whole thing covered, it looks kind of funky, don't be alarmed. I'm gonna take my lint-free cloth and I'm gonna wipe across the whole thing in the same direction every time. I'm not going in circles, I'm not going back and forth. I'm going from side to side, wiping off the glaze until I get the look that I want. It is stained my hair with the smoked glaze so that's cool learned my lesson now this is the stained smoked glaze top now we're gonna move on to the longer dresser All right, so I'm all done with the smoked glaze now. So I hope you guys learned some things about how to apply it and how to get this look. Remember that you've got to start out with that aged gray color and then you 
apply it with a brush on the smoked glaze all the way across the tops and then you come back with a lint-free cloth and wipe it in the same direction wiping as much as you want off it could stay darker i personally like mine to be a little bit of a lighter stained glaze but you could even leave it on there for longer and make it into like a darker glaze it's just up to you but i hope you like that Okay, and the last step of application is the matte clear top coat from Rust-Oleum. Again, I really like to use the same paints, top coats all the way across, so that's why I am using this to finish. The top coat is the most important part because it protects the piece from getting any more damage on it. And so I'm gonna apply this to all the drawers, all the bases. So with the top coat, again, same as the glaze, I like to go the same direction. Okay, top coat is done on everything already and the top coat is dry on the drawers so I'm gonna put them in and then I'm gonna put the hardware back on remember I'm just using the original hardware because it's going to match exactly as I planned with the style of dressers that I have so for the drawer liner I just picked up this easy liner from Walmart it was about five dollars for a roll of about 15 feet and I've already kind of measured and it looks like I'm gonna have to cut some of this off so that it can just fit right nicely in the drawers straight. So I'm gonna be measuring for a while and then I'm gonna cut and then I'm gonna install it. Okay, all of the drawers have the liner. It looks awesome and it looks way better than it did before. So I'm glad with how well that turned out. It was worth the hour that I spent doing it. Um, now it is time to finally get these staged and posted to Facebook Marketplace. So we're going to roll out the rug and get some photos taken. All right, the moment of truth to see if all of those tips about the cards is going to work. I'm going to take them out. Doing pretty good, pretty good. All right, you guys got me. That is a really good tip and I will definitely be using it again in the future. take some photos and maybe put a few things on top just to stage it just a tad bit um, and then get it listed on Facebook Marketplace. Remember to always measure to put on the post because they need to know how big it is. One, to pick up and to have enough room in their trucks, but two, to also make sure that it fits in the space where they're planning to put it. Alrighty, so I have taken the photos. I'm going to go edit them up and crop them to make them look nice for Facebook for posting. And I have come to the price of $425. I have sold the long dresser with two nightstands for $400. I have sold the exact same style except plus one nightstand for $4.75 before, and I have sold the exact same set but no mirror for $3.75. So that kind of gave me my range. So I'm gonna try and go for $4.25 and we'll see what happens. I got this set posted over on Facebook Marketplace. That is where I post all of my furniture for sale. So I listed this at $425. And on my listing, I always make sure to include dimensions, the color of the pieces, 
what all is included, a pickup location, and that I accept both cash and Venmo as forms of payment. That just makes sure that they know what I'm expecting and that they know how to purchase things from me. And I had a few people reach out right away. And then about four hours later, I had a Venmo deposit in my bank. So that means I sold it for full price because I stood my ground. Even though they did ask for a little bit less, I said, nope, sorry, I am firm. And they said, okay, we'll take it anyway. With that being said, I got these pieces for free. I sold them for $425. And then I have a material cost estimated at about $15. I had all of the materials, so that's just a rough estimate because um, I never use all of the paint that I have. Take that from the 425, that is a profit of $410. And you know where that's going straight toward my student loan debt. I hope you guys liked this set and really learned how to get this look on the tops of these pieces. Um, I think it really accents the white and it's not so bland across the whole thing. This was just another little in-depth tutorial about how to get this look. This look is so popular in my area. As I said, I sold this set in four hours and I could have sold it multiple times. So really identify what is popping in your area, what sells well, what sells fast, what look people are looking at and wanting to buy because that is going to in the end get you the most profit hit that subscribe button down below to continue following along on my journey follow me over on instagram at furniture flipping teacher and i do a lot of behind the scenes there i kind of show you what i'm working on currently in that moment so definitely head over there and give me a follow and i'll see you on the flip side